Pragmatic Fanatic, Eric here. Uh, how about this perspective? I'm in a different spot in my motorhome today because I cleared off my couch. Um, I don't ever use this couch because it always has crap on it, and now I have it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, cleaning the RV yesterday was really helpful in organizing, and I have a lot more space. I can use it. I also sold my PS2 system and all the games for some extra Christmas cash, so I was happy about that. Um, and it got rid of a lot of extra space in the cupboards and down here by the TV. Um, one thing is, I ran out of, ran out of propane today, um, because I've been using a lot more propane. I've just been using the propane heater a lot more, because uh, it's been really especially cold, and I didn't factor that into my budget, but, you know, it turns out I'm actually okay, because all I did was disconnect that 20-pound, uh, cylinder outside, and then I plugged it into my onboard 35-gallon tank, and so that'll get me through January 6th just fine. Um, a bunch of stuff I want to go over. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is my charging system. So the, the method for which I actually usually go charge most of my stuff. So what I'm going to show you is my charging backpack that I take with me into different places. So the charging backpack, not to be confused with my regular school backpack or carry backpack, is a separate backpack that I keep that has special stuff in it. It has everything I need to charge. Um, not that I can't charge in the RV with my DC power when I'm running generator, but I love to take advantage of any opportunity I can to charge outside the motorhome, whether that's at school while I'm in class, whether that's at the gym while I'm working out, when I go to the library and I'm wasting time at the library, even when I go to McDonald's sometimes and I sit there for two hours on Wi-Fi, I love to have my charging backpack. So what happens in my charging backpack is what I have is I have a power strip. That power strip stays in my backpack and it has all of these accessories plugged into it. And then all of these accessories are also in the backpack. So that the only thing that actually comes out of the backpack is the end of the white cord of the power strip. This enables me to power my, let's, let's just say like on a typical day I have the wall uh, um, shaver trimmer. I have, the next one would be my uh, Canon Vixia charger. And then this one would be going to my laptop, my MacBook, and then this would be my iPhone. And then right now I have this one hooked into my speaker. Now all this stuff stays in the backpack. It's very discreet. It doesn't look like I'm charging anything. I can pack it all in. I can pack it out easy. It's very easy to just unplug it from the wall if I need to leave or when I need to leave. And sometimes the cords do get a little messed up and tangled inside the actual backpack, but you know, there's always going to be time to fix it later, and like I said, I think it's just worth taking advantage of charging. Um, one thing I will remind you guys, though, do not ever leave your backpack anywhere near an outlet plugged in. Uh, well, for two reasons. One, you know, somebody can just walk off with your stuff. All they have to do is unplug it and steal it. But secondly, it, it looks very suspicious if it's not covered a little bit or you're not standing right next to it. Leaving a backpack in a public place plugged into a wall, I don't know, it looks like a bomb or something. Who knows? It's just not a good idea. And really, you don't want to draw any extra attention to yourself. So if you're going to leave somewhere or go somewhere, take it with you. You know, if you have to go to the bathroom and you're somewhere, just unplug it real quick and take it into the bathroom and come back out. So that is how I do charging externally outside the motorhome whenever I can. The other thing I was going to share today was how I take care of dirty laundry and stuff. Um, usually I'm only, I like to wait like two weeks, like get a good two weeks where the laundry built up and then go do three loads. In the summertime I wash my own clothes. I have a little portable washing machine, which is outside in that storage container on the back of my motorhome, and then just air dry at the campground. Um, it does take DC power or 110 volt, but it's an easy way to do it. In the winter time, it doesn't get warm enough in here to hang dry clothes or outside, so I do have to use a laundromat or a friend's house or something. But the method that I use, I will show you. <clears throat> what I do is I use this closet compartment over here for my laundry. I think I showed this in one of my earlier videos, but I didn't really explain it. So in front here is all of my clean clothes. All of my pants are here, all of my shirts are on one side, and then I have two boxes back here, two cardboard boxes for underwear, and then the second one back here is for socks, and in the back, that's where I throw all my dirty laundry. So basically, when back there, that starts to fill up as high as where the clean clothes would be, it's basically time to do laundry. And uh, while this is not like a perfect setup by any means, um, 
I would love to be able to separate the dirty laundry from the clean laundry. It is what it is, and it works for me. And as for hot water and how I heat the water and how often I heat the water, I have changed that concept in the last three months. I used to keep it on all the time, and it was just hot water on demand whenever I wanted it to, but I found that, that I didn't need to do that, and I was probably wasting a lot more propane than I need to do. So I do always have the pilot light lit on the outside of the motorhome, so I don't have to physically go out there and light the pilot. That's always lit. But when it comes time to turn on, when I want hot water once a day when I'm getting ready to take shower, up on my control panel here, there is just a switch right here to turn on the hot water. So I hit this, and it kicks on outside and kind of makes some noise. And then basically it's going to take <clears throat> about an hour until I really have like hot, hot water that I can take a shower with. So what I do is I take a shower at that time. And I'll show you my shower area. I think I already did. Uh, you just turn on the hot water, give it a little cold water. Turn this guy on. And voila. And if we come over here, you can hear, I'm going to close this door over here. You can hear my water pump under here. We're going to move a few things. It's really loud, but right under here, there's my water pump, and it's growling. You can hear it. <laughs> but yeah, it does make some noise, but it's, you know, I... <coughs> it works. Let me just turn this off real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then let's uh, talk about the water pump itself. The water pump I replaced when I first got this motorhome. Um, the old one just kind of growled and didn't work at all. So, I don't know what I was doing there. But yeah, it didn't work and it made a whole lot of noise, but I replaced it with one of the new SureFlow water pumps. And uh, this one's different than the old ones. The old ones you had to turn on when you wanted to use them. When you were done using the water in the faucets, you're supposed to turn it off because it's not meant to be on. It, it'll just keep running and running and running. So there's an actual switch up on my board that turns the water pump on and off. Well now, when I'm not hooked up to the city water, I'm using my tank, I just leave it on all the time because as you can hear, when the pressure reaches that certain PSI, the water pump automatically turns off and it won't turn back on until it, the pressure is relieved on one of the faucets or the shower and then it knows to turn back on and apply that pressure. So kind of a cool new feature in some of the new water pumps and so yeah, those are a few things I just wanted to show and add to my video. Two other things I wanted to point out, though, is that we got snow. Set only the second time this season we got snow. And so I'll show you outside, like, some of the views outside the car. Um, I don't know. It looked kind of cool. It's kind of nice to see snow. It wasn't, like, icy or anything. I think the temperature raised. Like, when I woke up, the temperature had already risen up to 35 or 38. And then it started raining, and then it all went away. And right now at night, now it's all gone, and it's just turned to rain. And the other thing is, um, you know, I, sh I put in a new video a couple days ago about my cat Jax and how cool he is. And so hopefully you check that one out. If you haven't, he's, uh, well, here, I'll show you. He's, he's up here sleeping, kind of, just being cranky. But he will play fetch from time to time and do his thing. You tired, Jax? Okay, we'll leave you alone. But yeah, check out my other video about him playing fetch and hanging out in the RV and doing the camping life. Otherwise, yeah. Talk to you guys later. This is Nomadic Fanatic. Oh, one other thing. Uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I already have 23 subscribers. Woohoo! Yeah, so subscribe. Talk to you later.